Uh, welcome to Valois United Church. This is uh, Sunday, August the 16th, Reverend Hunter uh, speaking. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for all the kind uh, prayers and thoughts and emails and so on um, that you relayed to me during my recent illness. Uh, I was in hospital for most of July and uh, I'm doing a lot better and uh, I'll be glad to see you in the office and so on in the coming days. Um, but I really did appreciate all of the care and concern that you expressed, and um, uh, I thank you uh, for that. As we bow together in prayer, um, receive these words. As on the first day you began the work of creating us, as on the first day you be gave new life to your Son, so on this first day, beloved, freshen and remake us. In this summer season, let our lives begin again because of Christ, who shows us your loving power. Let us pray. Creator of all, we thank you for the summer. We thank you for the warmth of the sun, increased daylight, and we thank you for the beauty that we see all around us and the opportunity we have to be outside and enjoy your creation. Draw us closer to you this summer. And teach us how we can pray, no matter where we are or what we are doing. Warm our souls with the awareness of your presence. And light our paths with your word and your counsel. Receive our adoration and praise as we bow in these moments of reflection and prayer. In the name of Christ, we pray this day. Amen. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, eyes open, eyes closed, um, please join somehow in some way as we share together in the words of prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A portion of the uh, Gospel reading for today comes from Matthew's Gospel. It's uh, 15th chapter, verses 21 to 28. Jesus left that place and went to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. One of the things you might be considering as you, you hear those words from, from Matthew's gospel is, does Jesus learn? I mean, when we say that, we might get concerned and maybe start getting concerned, thinking, well, does that mean that Jesus isn't perfect, or does it mean that Jesus isn't complete, or that Jesus isn't sinless? But I ask this because of these, these words from the passage about the Canaanite woman. Does the woman simply pass some kind of faith test? Or does she really persuade Jesus? I mean, if we go with the first option, then Jesus really didn't mean the things that he said, and we might find that comforting. You know, all that stuff about puppies under the table and 
really being about his heritage and ministering only to Israelites, all of that was just some kind of a test, a way of bringing to the forefront the faith that God had already put in that woman. But the other choice is that Jesus' own sense of God's kingdom has been somehow stretched by his encounter with this woman. I mean, what if Jesus means exactly what he said? And the woman takes him on and persuades him to think about something larger. And she holds on until she gets a blessing out of him, a blessing for her daughter. And so we might wonder, does Jesus have it all together? Or is Jesus a learner, stretching and somehow growing into his role, his sense of things? The good thing about that is that we might wonder to ourselves if we could be learners too, stretching and growing into God's purposes for us. You know, uh, just a, a week or so ago, I was talking with a lady at the lake where we're renting a cottage, and um, and um, I was noticing the lake was quite busy. There are a lot of motorboats and people on, on water skis and so on. And I said, oh, well, I didn't really grow up with cottages and all of these things, but it's kind of nice to sit here on the dock. And, and uh, when Elizabeth's uh, family was uh, younger, they had a cottage on Lake Ashton, and and uh, they decided they would uh, not have uh, motor boats on the lake. And so they made that choice and moved to you know, electric motors and other things that don't have wake. And, um, and the woman seemed horrified. And she said, well, but, but we worked so hard as a lake association to make sure that that seven-year-old boy over there who likes to water ski can go anytime they like. And we have limits, of course. Uh, Previous generations have, have, have said that, you know, you can only water ski at certain times, but I wish we didn't have those. I wish that we could uh, let that little boy water ski whenever he wanted. And I was listening, and I realized I was talking to somebody who had a completely different viewpoint than, than I was holding, and all I could do was listen and learn from them, because they had a very strong viewpoint, and and um, they believe very strongly in people being able to, to enjoy their property and also um, provide fun for family. So strong sense of freedom and also private ownership, which um, is not always a popular option these days. People often think that lakes and rivers and things should belong to everybody, but um, everybody doesn't hold that viewpoint. And so, opportunity to be a learner and to listen and to understand that somebody had a different viewpoint and we're always learning always growing and if, if Jesus was learning and Jesus was growing and stretching then well you and I can do that too and it's a very important skill to be able to do those things and, and to understand each other better and more lovingly um, respond so things that everybody treasures can be addressed and, and held in balance. So I leave those thoughts with you for this week, and I, I hope that God will use them in some way in you as you think about the, the week that lies ahead and the things that you're going to meet in it. But if Jesus could be a learner, then maybe you and I can be learners too. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Beloved God, over these summer days, we quietly pray now for others that we know, resting in your peace. And in the soothing stillness, we pray for the healing and for hope and for their very lives. We pray for a broken world touched by a variety of concerns, for physical health of others, for people and their emotional and mental well-being, and concerns about work and about children and concerns of and for the elderly and also people's finances these days. Enable us to see your gifts day by day, 
we might be generous with each other, with e with each other and sustain each other as we grow and stretch and, and develop into our love for one another. Bless our hearts and minds with your own peace and hope and love that we might share what you have given with all who will cross our path in this coming week. In the name of Christ this day we pray. Go now into this week with the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit.